Ahoy, friends. Welcome to Building the Alpha Dory. I'm Dan, and this is a project to build an 1890s style racing dory to the lines uh, taken by John Gardner and included in the Dory book. Illustrations by Sam Manning. Today we're going to be working on cutting the first knuckle. Uh, so we're going to be cutting the frames to, uh, to hang the third plank. All right, let's get out into the shop and get to it. Okay, so here we are uh, in the shop. And you can see I've marked and cut two of the uh, <clears throat> of the uh, knuckles on the frames. So we got another <clears throat> another uh, six to mark and cut. And I'll show you how we're doing that. Uh, the other thing, even before we do that, that we need to address is this little air space between the frame and the plank, which has definitely got me <laughs> kind of baffled. This exact same air space little bit larger actually, or somewhat larger, significantly larger, almost an inch, uh, occurred on the first Alpha Dory that I built. So the bizarre thing is though, if you look along these planks, I'll try and hold the camera. So, <clears throat> so that you can see the first plank, the garboard, and the second plank, the number one plank, are both tight to that frame. And they tuck in at the transom. So their top edge is actually being pushed out by that fourth frame. You can see the top edge here is tight and being pushed in this direction because from this frame to that to that frame it's it's less of a curvature to the side here and then more of a curvature to the side from from this fourth frame back to the transom now can anyone explain to me how in the how in the width of one plank it goes from a tight curve from pushing out on the plank to the curvature of the boat actually being beyond where the frame is. It's almost like this frame would have to, it's almost like this frame would have to be cut up and in here and then down, like almost like there'd have to be a reverse curve to that flat of the frame. Now every other frame along this, this the th first three planks of the boat is just dead straight. And every other frame has pressure on it from the planks. So I, like I say, this happened in the other boat, the other alpha that I built as well. So I don't know what's going on. I'd like to say I did, but <clears throat> there is a uh, dory trick. Now, one thing I could do is I could just force this up into place. But I don't like the amount of pressure it's putting across the grain on this plank. And it's far better to simply put a wedge in here, glue it in place, and then take up, you know, the, take up the tiny bit that's left by the, you know, after the wedge is in. And at that point, you're only taking up maybe a sixteenth of an inch, which is not an issue. Um, and I mean, it's not like this plank will be weaker because these planks down here are unsupported you know, from the lower plank up to where it impacts the frame. 
you know, the top edge of the plank. So this, this plank will be no different than the others as far as strength. But, uh, yeah, no, it's just, uh, I'll have to crack open uh, the dory book and take a real close look, like maybe put a straight edge directly on the plans that Gardner's got in that book and see if he's got any sort of reverse curve drawn into that aft frame that, of the boat that he took the lines off of. It's just very interesting to me, and I'm not sure what is creating that. That, uh, you know, it's definitely a transition from the plank. The plank below it, the first plank above the garboard, is being tucked in. You can see it at this angle. And it's being tucked in by the transom and pushed out by that frame. Then by the time we reach the next plank up, the number two plank, the curvature of the boat is bowing the top edge of that plank out beyond the plane of the, the face of the frame. So, yeah. Anyway, the sort of things that uh, you end up thinking about when you're building a dory. Anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah. So what I did was um, I made up a quick little... A sort of quicky little jig for marking the uh, marking the bevels. Yeah, because that's what we want to be doing today anyway. Marking these bevels. And what I did is, uh, it's just, the only important part of this jig is a straight front face. And then the, um, and then the length from... This bottom edge, which it, which represents the bottom edge of the plank that I'm going to be putting on, that, that sort of registers that dimension. And then these tick marks, so the difference between that angle and these tick marks, which is the width of the plank that I'm going to be putting on at each of the frames. So here's the width that frame one. Here's the width that frame two frame three, and frame four. All right, so, <clears throat> so the way I'm using this piece of wood, and you can do pretty much the same thing with a, uh, with a steel, with a steel ruler, um, and have a very similar, very similar result. But, so what I'm doing, is that so the width of this cut here represents the width of the overlap that I'm going to have uh, from the outer plank to the inner plank, the amount that this outside plank is going to drop down over that inside plank. And like I say, the 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 corner of this here is the represents the bottom edge of the plank that I'm putting on. So what I've been, what I'm doing is I'll put this so that's registering the height and then the that bottom corner is landing on this outside plank where I want the <clears throat> bottom edge of the of the uh plank that I'm installing to be all right and so then this is the amount, the inside is the amount I'll have to bevel the, 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 this, where this straight edge impacts the plank below. The number two plank represents the amount of wood that I'm going to have to bevel off of the number two plank to get this outer plank here that I'm measuring for to lay flat. And then up here, I'm on the number three frame right now. So I'll bring the number three mark to, you know, just about at the edge of the uh, wood of the frame that I've got. And then I can, uh, and then I can mark this whole thing with a pencil. All right, so bring it down so it's on it. Bring this out so it's at the uh, frame face. And then make a line and then while I've got it on there I'll make a mark down here 
where the plank's going to end, where I want my bevel to go to. And I'll mark the bevel on the inside, which represents the deepness into the wood that I'm going to have to bevel. All right, so I got, I just got a bunch of different marks from that one piece of wood. Now, like I say, you can use a steel to do just about the same thing. Bring it in the amount that you want to leave on your on the inside edge of your plank. You don't want to bevel this inside plank to a feather edge if you can help it. Um, and if you bevel it beyond a feather edge, then you're actually going to be losing height in the plank. So there's that to keep in mind. And then you can you know put whatever angle you want on there. Mark your angle, and then you'll and then you'll basically want to either saw down through and then you know, find out where this where this other line is going to be, you know, how deep you're going to bevel. Or, um, yeah, I guess you could just measure down on the side of the plank and then just join it by eye. That's a, another way to do it. But I kind of like this little, this little gauge because it, it gives you, it, it, it draws a straight line right through this plank even while the wood is still there and lets you see where a straight line comes out on the other side of the plank. So it's uh, really helpful when you're cutting that bevel just to visualize how much wood you need to take off and where. Anyway, so that's, uh, <clears throat> that's what I'm doing. And I just drew the number three bevel there. So you can see that's what we're going to cut off. All right, so why did I do, why am I cutting it off now rather than cutting it off on the bandsaw however many months ago when it was that I cut these frames out? Okay, well, however many months ago, I didn't know where this plank was going to end on this frame. I didn't know exactly, right? Like, see... I didn't know if it was going to end here, or here, or here. You know, what if it had ended there? That would change. That would change where this line was radically. You know, small, just an inch sh shorter, an inch less width, which is you know, like say, a half an inch on this plank and a half an inch on that plank. And a half an inch on this plank, I could be you know, almost three inches, I could be almost an inch and a half off in, in either direction. So, so three months ago or six months ago or whatever, I was cutting these frames out, I didn't know that this plank was going to come exactly to there. But I do now because I've got the plank on the boat. So, all right, so what if I, what if I, you know, cut it to here, cut the, cut the, the bevel to here, and then on this next frame, I'd, I'd cut the bevel to here. Like, you know, that's not a big, that's not a big difference off, you know, like, now, well, these two frames were, were cut from the same pattern, so I guess you wouldn't run into that problem, but on the next frame up, what if the bevel had been a little bit off? Now, I suppose if you've got patterns that you're refining over time, you could cut bevels to those. But that's not how we did it in the dory shop over on uh, the Merrimack River. So, you know, this, this to me is a, a very interesting way of doing it, which is this plank here has a batten fair edge on it, all right? And we're, so we're essentially, when we lay this plank on the boat, we're as good as laying a batten, a fair batten on the boat, as long as we've cut this plank edge to a nice fair curve. So this plank is dictating where the knuckle goes. This, this plank is dictating how these lap lines are going to end up. And rather than having, having to adjust the shape of our plank so that it lands on a knuckle, and then we could like get some sort of a weird wonky plank that would be chasing the frame knuckles as it went along. Now we've got a fair line 
Now we're just cutting the knuckles to that fair line. So the next plank that goes on, we know it's going to have a nice curve. It's going to be fair to the eye and the water will flow past it um, in a nice smooth manner. So, so that's what we're up to. And uh, yeah, this is the next plot. This is the next frame to do it on.